Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the third day of Wikimania um, here on Friday. This morning, we have Kat and Catherine from Creative Commons um, doing a presentation together. Kat is here in person and Catherine will be dialing in. Morning, Catherine. How are you doing? I'm really well. Great to see you. Welcome. Thank you. So whenever you're ready, Catherine. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for having us. And um, I loved you in the introductions there. And uh, I just want to start by saying I would have absolutely loved to have joined you in person and um, sadly due to these issues it meant I could not travel to Singapore and so I am so pleased that Kat is there with you in person and um, and as you know Kat has been part of the the wiki community for a long time um, and I'd like to call Kat a veteran but she's not that old and is certainly still very much part of your community and the open world in its various, various guises. And uh, I just pinged her about your karaoke tonight and asked her what she was singing. So she might share that with you, maybe not in the presentation, but certainly this evening. Um, so due to the marvels of technology, I can be with you uh, today. And the topic I'm talking about is CC, our strategic objective of better sharing, and the topic which keeps on giving, which is artificial intelligence AI. Next slide, please. Um, for those of you who don't know Creative Commons, um, Creative Commons is an international non-profit non organisation dedicated to helping build and sustain a thriving commons of shared knowledge and culture. Together with an extensive member network and multiple partners, we build capacity, we develop practical solutions and we advocate for better open sharing of knowledge and culture that serves the public interest. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, since 2002, the CC licenses have served as an alternative to traditional copyright, providing a simple, standardised and legal way for individuals and institutions to freely share images, music, research, educational resources, data, cultural artefacts, and much, much more. Our licenses power open sharing on popular platforms like Wikipedia, Flickr, YouTube, Medium, Vimeo, and Khan Academy, OER platforms like OpenStack, Libretex, and Rebus, and scholarly publications like Elite, Frontiers, and many, many more. Creative Commons legal tools are core open infrastructure, yet most people are unaware that the infrastructure behind the CC licenses has to be funded. Our licenses are free, but require maintenance and upgrades. Each year we have to fundraise for the technical maintenance and support. And I want to thank you, the folks who use our licenses, and many of you who contribute to our fundraising efforts, thank you. Without your support, we would not exist. And it's wonderful to work with partners such as Wikimedia, who are one of the biggest users and supporters of our licenses, and be with you at this incredible event. Next slide, please. So I hope that we see some of you at our global summit in Mexico City the first week of October, where our key theme is the subject of AI and the commons. So perhaps I can give you a sneak preview as we consider the concept of better sharing in our new world of AI. Next slide, please. Better, before considering AI, let's take a moment to think about better sharing. So Creative Commons strategy for 2021 to 2025 included a new concept for CC, the, the idea of not just sharing, but of better sharing. Our strategy, now two years old, sharpened our focus on core goals. We wanted to focus on shared knowledge and culture with facts, ideas, and dreams shared equitably, which have long-term impact and resilience. I know this audience 
are some of the greatest advocates for open sharing. And I want to thank you. You live and breathe this day in and day out. And the world is a better place because of your work. Believe me, it is. But here is a gentle reminder of by open sharing. Open sharing that advances universal access to knowledge and culture in furtherance of fundamental human rights. Open sharing that fosters creativity, innovation and collaboration, enabling progress in, in addressing global challenges such as climate, especially when it facilitates connections between people with diverse perspectives. And open sharing that is inherently an act of social solidarity, reflecting a belief that we all have a stake in our collective body of creative and intellectual wealth. For me, this act of social solidarity is what differentiates organisations such as Wikipedia and CC. And we're working to share knowledge and culture wherever you are in the world. This is powerful. Today, change technology, such as AI, but also social, cultural, political, legal, and economic environments raise new challenges for our open movement. Our project, what we have achieved so far, and to create the world we want, CC has expanded our focus beyond just our copyright licensing, because content sharing cannot be decoupled from economic or ethical concerns. Open licensing is only meaningful in an environment that already has the necessary char characteristics. If you live in a legal environment which doesn't permit open sharing, or where the public cannot participate because of social or economic factors, open licenses are not enough to make open sharing happen. Indeed, we've witnessed firsthand that the benefits of, of open sharing can be undermined by exploitative practices that threaten the financial sustainability of open endeavours, leading to economic hardship. Open sharing practices can also be marred by ethical concerns as the problematic use of open content to train potentially harmful uses of AI technologies. Next slide, please. But here is the challenge. AI can be exploitative, as we've seen in the training of biased facial recognition models, but used differently, AI has the potential to build a commons unimaginable when Wikipedia and CC were first created. So how can we build this new commons, but at the same time ensure creators are fairly rewarded and remunerated? How can we support new forms of art and expression which AI is enabling? And how do we embrace change which our new AI worlds are creating, but drive guardrails through consensus? How do we minimise the harm whilst reaping the benefits for the commons? Next slide, please. So things currently stand the great hope of both the internet and AI will only be realised with standards, norms and practices which are equally agreed upon. Without these, we can see the threat to the commons and public domain is large. We see the debate focusing on an expansion of copyright rather than a balance between reserving rights and sharing. Also a debate which is not actually about copyright at all. Next slide. My fear is an expansion of copyright rules rather than a balanced copyright regime across our world will lead to greater restriction on open sharing. In very few AI debates do we hear about the commons and the need for its promotion, preservation and protection. We must pursue a commons of knowledge and culture that is inclusive, equitable, just, and which inspires reciprocity, a commons that serves the public interest. To that end, we must transition from promoting more sharing to fostering better sharing in our world of AI. Sharing that is contextual, ethical, inclusive, sustainable, 
purposeful and pro-social. We do not want to promote sharing for the sake of sharing. We want to promote sharing that is a positive impact on people and their communities. Next slide, please. When Wikipedia and CC were created more than 20 years ago, the world today was unimaginable. We need to reimagine what the commons will look like. And I want to hear from you. What do you want to see that can build a commons of knowledge and creativity in the world of today, not of the past, but the world of now? What are the solutions that can help build the world we would like to imagine and envision? I know that the contributors and technologists at Wikipedia are already looking at this. At CC, we are considering approaches to help give creators more choice, as well as considering collaborations in line with our better sharing strategy, where people can have trust, but also where the commons can be built upon in the public interest for the public good. I look forward to working with you all so that our world works for the interests of the many and not the few, and where a new commons can be realised. Please do join us at our Global Summit in Mexico City in October to continue the conversation. And next, I will pass the microphone to Kat, who is physically with you, to dig a bit deeper into how CC's licences and legal tools intersect with AI, the commons and the public domain. Thank you. And I hope you have a fantastic time at Wikimania and I hope you enjoy the karaoke tonight. Thank you for your time. Great. Hello? Okay, great. Hi, good morning. Uh, uh, thank you, Catherine, for this great uh, introduction. Uh, it's been great to work with her at Creative Commons. Uh, and I will say that uh, she's a great person to be working with open movements because of her uh, long experience as a member of the European Parliament, which is almost as complicated as politics of the open, open movements. Uh, I'm going to pick up the discussion with the more legal and licensing focused portion of the talk uh, and thank all of you for appearing at a legal talk at 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I know that's not easy, especially after the wiki races last night. I'm the general counsel at Creative Commons uh, and I actually did not set out in my life to become a copyright lawyer. Uh, I started it after I joined Wikipedia and the Wikimedia movement uh, and discovered that this was actually really interesting after all. Uh, and I'm so glad that I get to work with the open movements that I came up in and love. Uh, and this is not the first time that I've been on the plenary stage uh, at Wikimania. And I think the last time was when I was on the board and answering questions about fundraising. So I'm so happy to be here today uh, talking about uh, licensing AI in the Commons. Well, CC is best known for its copyright licenses, which are the primary copyright licenses used on the Wikimedia projects. We're not solely a copyright-focused organization. Our mission is to reduce the legal barriers to sharing knowledge and creativity, and the licenses are only one tool for that. I'll say that some of the barriers toward sharing knowledge and creativity are outside our scope, especially that we can't always bring people together where we want them to be. Uh, if you were lucky, you would have had Catherine here giving a longer talk about big picture issues and strategy, uh, but she's not able to come today because of other issues, and no matter where a conference is held, there are always people who can't go for a variety of reasons. Uh, so I'm really happy to see the hybrid approach to this conference, and I hope it's working well for those of you tuning in online. The CC licenses are the primary tool that we use to promote our mission of openness and Wikimedia projects are one of the foremost examples of how CC licensing can be used to break down these barriers. Text and media from the projects find new lives in a nearly uncountable number of places. The legal infrastructure CC provides allows projects to grow on top of this material with the basic rules already settled, saving time, effort, and the resources that would have gone into resolving legal issues. The public nature of the license means that contributors never lose the rights to the material they create themselves, especially under the share-alike term that requires those new projects to be freely reusable as well. But CC's focus is broader than copyright. It's also on policy that will enable a society where everyone is empowered to participate in, create, and learn from its culture. Our aim is the ability to create and sustain a vibrant commons. The licenses are a hack on the copyright system. 
created in response to legal barriers. If the law wasn't going to change to allow knowledge and culture to be shared, how could we create a system that would allow the kind of sharing that people wanted to do and were already doing in a way that didn't match up with the default rules of copyright? The licenses work entirely as a layer on top of the default copyright rules without requiring legislative changes and new international treaties, but they only work on copyright. When people ask CC what we're going to do about AI, they're usually expecting us to suggest a license revision or other legal tool, that another hack on the copyright system is a way to address the issues and challenges. But we don't think copyright is the best way to approach the problem. I know what you're thinking. Aren't copyright hacks the best way to solve every problem? Uh, we know that this isn't the case. We know that it is just the case for copyright and that introducing copyright into places where it doesn't belong has often created more challenges than it has solved. The implications of the explosion of AI tools aren't obvious. Is it providing a substitute for human creativity? Or is it making human creativity more accessible and more able to be reused? Our community, the CC community and the greater open community, is split on whether AI tools are a good thing for the commons. And this is completely understandable. Plenty of ambiguities and gray areas are amplified when things happen at the scale of AI. For example, creating artwork in the style of another artist. The first intuition we might have is that this is a copy. But most of us creating art at least start out inspired by what we already know, drawing on features and aspects of the original that we admire. When it's one work, that took as much time to create as the original. What is fan fiction if not, I love this author, and I want the stories that they never got around to writing. Or someone else whose work is just being used as a short way to describe a genre. When you're asking for something like that, something like their name, you don't necessarily want a copy of them, just something with some, the same vibes and the same feelings. Uh, in my past and, and current, uh, I'm a musician, and often when I'm looking to find places to play with, uh, a band doesn't describe their sound as like a genre name will often just list other bands that they sound like. They're not trying to copy them, they're just trying to evoke them. Making these small-scale imitations of another artist's style is how art has been created, as long as art has existed. There are basically no original ideas. And what about non-creative works, like Wikipedia? In the best case, it's the world's best research assistant. Uh, AI can't yet write articles on its own, but has asked access to more books than you could ever read in a lifetime. But in the worst case, as we've heard in some sessions earlier, it's just garbage, uh, hallucinations, things that are made up, the opposite of what we want. And if we come into things where the AI is being trained on like garbage hallucination content, uh, it could lead to a collapse of the information ecosystem. I wanna be an optimist about these tools, uh, in part because it has captured the public imagination. And I want people in the audience to raise your hand if you've ever used ChatGPT or Stable Diffusion or just one of these other tools. And like, uh, looking out here, that's a majority of you. Uh, we've, I've talked to people who are trying to set a company policy for how they use AI and their uh, chief information officer will say, oh no, no, we, we just ban it. People aren't allowed to use it. Uh, and then uh, as a as a consultant will go around and try and figure out what the policy should be, they will talk to the people who are at that company and find out that everyone is using it, they're just not telling anybody. Uh, used well, they amplify our powers of creation. They write faster, they reduce the resources needed to create. They fill in while we, while we might otherwise need others. And the outputs can contribute to the commons. They are not authored by humans, they're not eligible for copyright. They are uncopyrightable works that could belong to the global public domain. The motivation behind asking CC to do something about AI is usually not a question strictly about the technicalities of copyright. It's more of an expression about a fear of the future, what the future is going to mean for themselves, for people like them, and for human creativity in general. CC licenses are a great tool for one problem affecting sharing online, that the default rules of copyright don't often match up with the ways that creators and reusers actually want to participate in sharing. 
but generative AI presents a different set of problems, and not all of those are ones that a licensing tool can solve, or even that we want it to be able to solve. We take a minimalist position at CC around copyright law. We encourage creators to think about which rights they need to keep and which they want to share, and we encourage limits on copyright in order to enable culture to flourish. In particular, we think that the limitations and exceptions to copyright, fair use in the US, fair dealing in some other places, and many other jurisdictions, all with their own particular limitations and exceptions, uh, not an afterthought to copyright, but an essential part of the balance of the copyright system. And I will say that CC is a global organization. Uh, I am a US-based lawyer, and I will probably be a little US-centric in what I'm talking about. Uh, and I will try to be uh, and I will try to be considerate of international uh, situations when I know about them. But copyright is one of the things that actually has the most international standardization. Most of the things that I'm talking about actually do apply uh, in most places around the world. And generally, in most places, we consider the kind of use for training AI to fall under those limitations and exceptions. That the right to study and learn from a creative work, to get information from it, and then use that information to create something new shouldn't be something that a copyright holder gets to exclude. Imagine if when you read copyright material, a textbook, a reference work, something you've seen, in order to contribute what you've learned to Wikipedia, that you had to get a license from the copyright holder. There probably wouldn't be a Wikipedia. If the rules were too strictly enforced, there wouldn't be much of anything at all. How can you create if you can't learn from what other people have produced? Copyright protects the specific expressions of ideas making an exact copy, but not those underlying ideas, the facts and knowledge that you've gained from them, and for good reason. But this doesn't just apply to, for human learning, and hasn't even in the past. We've also fought for text and data mining exceptions. The right to read is the right to mine, so that computer-aided scholarship can be done on all the works in our culture without needing to seek a license to do that work. Copyright should not block scholarship or control access to the underlying knowledge. Should AI be considered in the same way? It's difficult to make the argument from a legal standpoint that copyright should block AI training, especially not while remaining consistent with our other positions. These systems are not simply copying and pasting material from the works used in training. They're extracting uncopyrightable data about these works and their features in order to generate new ones. The models produced don't resemble the original works they were trained on. The outputs they produce come from something that doesn't resemble the original at all. This also means that this affects all completely proprietary works just as much as openly licensed materials. Uh, it does affect distribution of the training sets, but what happens when you've trained on those materials is the same position. And I think about my own education. Uh, so my background is as a musician and composer. Uh, I went to university for music before studying law. And we were all expected as students to learn as much from the existing corpus as we could, to learn what the key elements were that made up a composer's style, to fill our brains with examples of what came before, so that we'd be better able to draw on those features when it came time to write music of our own. If we want to use copyright to block AI from this fair use, would we also block humans from making the same kind of use? CC licenses are explicit about not overriding exceptions and limitations to copyright. We're granting permissions on top of the existing rules so that you always have the same rights you had before and then some. You never lose a right you would have had if the works weren't CC licensed. We're also reluctant to put specific restrictions on the kind of use that can be made of a work, not on the kind of technologies you can use or the ways that you can use it. And this isn't everyone's approach. Uh, there have been a few licensing-based approaches that put strict boundaries on the use of AI, most notably, perhaps, the rail license. And this isn't a new approach. These things, usually called ethical licenses, have been around for a while. And one of the things that are most difficult about them is just the difficulty of interpreting all of these ethical terms. Uh, in particular, the rail license has a pretty long list of things that are forbidden. Uh, it's focused on preventing the bad things that could happen with AI, less about allowing the good things. Uh, there are several things, such as, for example, certain kinds of political speech or parody, that would be difficult to justify under that license, and probably many more that we find valuable. They're difficult to interoperate with. Any condition that is different means that you can't mix those materials in the commons. There's legal uncertainty. They're probably not enforceable in copyright, 
You might have to enforce them in contract. You might not be able to enforce them at all. Uh, and certainly, they're non-standard, which makes it difficult to get adoption, particularly among companies and institutions that already know what the standard licenses are. CC's closest experience with this is with non-commercial, uh, which is probably the most difficult of our licenses to interpret. We get plenty of com questions about them, and we're not always able to answer them. But to talk only about copyright would be too narrow a frame. Our position about CC is that copyright is not meant to solve every problem. Copyright is not a social safety net. Copyright is not community governance. Copyright is not an ethical framework. Copyright is just about making copies. And we're wary of trying to shoehorn it in to address those other gaps. But we want it to because we need those things. We need a social safety net. We need an ethical framework. We need community governance. Other solutions should come up in those places. Recommendations for best practices, codes of ethics, community governance do documents, regulation, social policies. But extending copyright won't solve those problems and won't help us empower people to participate in, create, and learn from culture. So we've been exploring a few different ways of supporting good policy in AI that aren't licensing. One major area is preference signaling in a similar way that robots.txt is used to signal to web scrapers not to archive works. Does this work if it can't be legally enforced? And should it even be applied to works that are openly licensed? We've already seen some examples of AI companies taking some of this approach. Another possibility is supporting the creation of more training data sets made only from works in the public domain or where authors have explicitly opted in. We want to have these conversations broadly and honestly because generative AI has both great potential to empower as well as great potential for harm. It's impossible to talk about it without acknowledging the benefits and the harms. We're excited about the potential for AI to enable new creation, empower people to create by adding on to their own abilities, and to draw upon more knowledge than any human could take in alone. Uh, so we need you for this conversation. Uh, and tomorrow there will be a session uh, from the Movement for a Better Internet, which CC and Wikimedia are both part of, that'll be around AI, the commons, and policies for a better internet. Uh, it's an international organization of civil society organizations and individuals trying to proactively come up with good policy. Uh, we've also got the CC copyright platform, which has an AI working group, where we're trying to create re resources to inform and teach the communities uh, about AI, the implications for the commons, and what the ethical things to do are. Uh, I'm going to close out briefly with what we're doing with CC Legal Tools uh, if we're not creating a new AI license, and that's around the public domain. Uh, first of all, I'm thrilled to see that Wikimedia has adopted the 4.0 licenses for text in its most recent terms of use revision, and I want to congratulate everyone who worked to resolve the details. Uh, some of you know that this is my second time working for CC. Uh, the first time when I was still on the Wikimedia board, uh, I was corresponding with the legal team about CC, about revisions to the license that would make sense from Wikimedia's point of view. Uh, in a very real sense, it was always meant to be used by the Wikimedia projects, and I'm so glad to see that happen. Uh, so obviously, we can update versions now and make Wikimedia out of date again. But in practice, we found that the 4.0 licenses have held up well in the situations where we wanted them to hold up. They've been adopted by national governments and grant-making institutions. They've been upheld in court. We continue to monitor legislative developments that would change the situation and require a new version of the licenses. Uh, we also have a copyright platform that has monthly meetings and several working groups made out of community members around the world that keeps us updated on things that are happening. But our public domain tools have gone an even longer time between revisions, and we believe it's time to revisit those. Uh, nobody knows the difference between CC0 and the public domain mark. We did a needs assessment survey last year uh, that attempted to find uh, whether people knew the differences, and we found that it was very complicated to use and didn't have a lot of, uh, didn't have enough difference between them to justify the two marks. Uh, we've also found that people want to use CC0 for software, uh, but there is one piece in it that excludes patent considerations that isn't present in almost any other free or open content license or legal tool uh, that prevents a danger uh, to reusers because it keeps open the possibility of patent lawsuits. So we're going to put out a discussion draft uh, later this year, and we need the consultation of people in a variety of jurisdictions and groups uh, to know if the revisions will work for everybody, and I hope that people from this community will participate. 
Uh, we'll be calling on many of you, especially the CC affiliates and members in the room. Uh, so uh, on the slide is uh, our license discussion list and uh, our information for just that you can email us. And uh, so I, I'm going to close this out by thanking everybody. Uh, CC and Wikimedia are obvious, obvious friends in the open infrastructure movement, and it's been great to coordinate with so many people on this movement on approaches to AI and approaches to knowledge. Uh, we have a few other sessions later, coming up later today from our open climate and open culture teams, as well as better internet. And I'm going to open this up for Q&A. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to Kat, who's here with us in person, and to Catherine, who joined us online. We're back here at 10.40 for the next session.